Before we explore the Lazara UHV87, it's important to understand the unique expertise behind this creation. The head of Lazara Yachts has a background in designing nuclear propulsion systems, a detail that profoundly influences the yacht's construction and design. As I show you around, I'm sure you will notice the exceptional build quality and meticulous attention to detail evident throughout this vessel, a testament to the incredibly high standards set by nuclear industry practices. During my visit on board, I spoke with the yard's owner, whose passion for the Lazara Yachts brand is matched only by his deep technical understanding of maritime engineering. This knowledge is evident in every aspect of the UHV-87, from its luxurious finish to its remarkable reliability, making it a standout example of nautical engineering excellence. Before I show you around, please don't forget to give the video a like and also don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. We'll start at the swim platform of the Lazara UHV87. It serves as a point of access to the water, facilitating various activities. Next is the cockpit. This area is designed to accommodate a number of guests equipped with seating and amenities for comfort and utility. As we head over to the port side of the cockpit, we'll revisit the swim platform. Note its dimensions and placement, emphasizing the yacht's functional design for water level activities. There's also plenty of staple rails to ensure that your guests are safe if they visit this area whilst you're underway. On the port side of the cockpit, there's an aft docking station. This station is essential for the yacht's navigation and docking when coming alongside Stern 2, demonstrating the practical aspects of the yacht's design. Moving from the Stern docking station, we approach a button on the starboard side. This activates the large sliding door that reveals the opulent and spacious saloon. Inside the saloon, a panoramic view unfolds. We pan around to showcase the serving area that is located on the port side, emphasizing the space's functionality and design. Let's shift our focus to the aft section of the saloon that features ample seating. Notice the large flat screen TV thoughtfully placed on an island for optimal viewing. The large windows in the saloon allow lots of natural light into the area and really help you feel connected to your surroundings. The dining area accommodating eight people is next. Here, the light feature above the table, a specific request from the boat's owner, adds a very distinctive and unique touch to this area. Every bespoke fixture and fitting aboard this boat has been made in-house to the highest standards. In the galley located on the port side, we start with the prominent fridge freezer, essential for those long journeys. This area blends intelligent design with ergonomic efficiency, evident in the arrangement of full-size melee appliances. These are strategically placed for ease of use, catering to both crew and guests. A sliding door discreetly separates the galley from the saloon and dining area, ensuring a balance between openness and privacy. There's also a door over here on the port side that leads out onto the port side deck. Now let's head back into the saloon because I want to show you the accommodation below deck. As we enter the saloon, you may notice over on the starboard side is a digital control panel. It controls the boat's media, lighting, climate and curtains, integrating essential functions for ease of use. As we head from the saloon to the accommodation area, let's talk about the boat's tank capacities. She has a fuel tank that can hold 2,770 gallons or 10,500 litres, a freshwater tank with a 500 gallon or 2,000 litre capacity and a blackwater tank accommodating 475 gallons, which is about 1,800 litres. In the twin single guest cabin, the two beds are set wide apart, offering ample space, 
A large porthole brings in natural light, complemented by subtle LED lighting. In the ensuite bathroom, we're greeted by a large window with privacy glass, allowing light while ensuring seclusion. Beneath it lies a spacious sink, and the bathroom also features a sizeable enclosed shower, complete with a seat for comfort and safety while the yacht is underway. As we head back out into the cabin, I want to show you the space located in between the two single berths. As you can see, there's plenty of room for your guests to keep their electronic equipment, such as their iPads, with ample sockets and a touchscreen display to help control the climate in this area. I love the wood finished decor throughout the accommodation areas on the boat. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. In the double cabin, a large comfortable bed sits prominently flanked by cabinets with lamps. Above is a sizeable porthole that invites natural light into the area, enhancing the room's ambience. As we walk into the ensuite, you'll notice this area that contains not only some more cabinetry, but a desk with a chair. In the ensuite, again, we can really see the quality that is evident throughout the boat. We've got a large shower that you can sit down in whilst you're underway, and the use of the indirect LED lighting, again, is just beautiful. On this bulkhead, we have a large flat screen TV so that you can sit and relax and enjoy your favorite yacht tuber. Again, digital controls are evident throughout the boat. Now before we head up to the owner's suite, let me show you the VIP cabin located forward. This VIP cabin reflects bespoke craftsmanship tailored to the owner's specifications. It features large windows and custom wood cabinetry. The space also has a queen size bed, a desk area, a television and ample storage. I was simply blown away by the elegant design and the high quality finish that I found throughout the boat. Again, walking in the VIP en suite, you really notice this sense of elegance and extremely high quality that is just so apparent throughout everywhere on board this boat. Just imagine being invited on board this boat as a VIP guest. Personally, I could spend weeks in this area. There's so much space here and everything feels so roomy. And again, the finish is just exceptional. It's an area I would never grow tired of looking at every morning I woke up and every night before falling asleep. I like the fact that in here we have a separate seating area that can be closed off with a small vanity area located over here on this side of the space. And if your wife or your partner is like mine and insists on bringing suitcases full of gear even on weekend trips away, then he or she won't be disappointed thanks to the vast amount of storage space you find in this cabin, as with all the cabins on board this boat. But now let's head back up onto the main deck because I want to show you the owner's suite and I am sure that you will be just as impressed as I was when I first saw this space. If you haven't already, please take a moment just to give this video a like because it really does help with the video's reach on YouTube. Entering the full beam master suite, the large bed commands attention, complemented by a seating area over to port. Four expansive portholes frame the space, offering views and amplifying its open feel. As we enter the full beam master ensuite, the his and her sinks are immediately noticeable, leading to the large shower located over on the port side. As we walk over towards this shower, we see its spacious interior and also highlighting the ample space in here, even next to the toilet. There's also plenty of headroom. A large porthole with privacy glass adds to the ambience, giving this ensuite a spa-like feel, which for me is really unusual for a motor yacht of this size, but really highlights the fantastic use of space throughout this yacht. Having explored the accommodation areas, we now make our way to the wheelhouse. On our way out, observe the extensive wardrobe space in the master cabin, meticulously tailored to meet the owner's specific needs. Remember, if you're watching this and you've got access to a boat you'd like me to feature on my YouTube channel, feel free to get in contact with me. You'll find my contact details in the video description. 
the big wheelhouse on board this boat provides the captain with a full 180 degree elevated view and its forward position allows for excellent visibility. An elevated lounge area is aft of the helm looking above the four large multi-function monitors. The latest generation of nav equipment and alarm monitoring seamlessly integrates the yacht's systems throughout this boat. Doors on the port and starboard side provide easy access to the bow. But what do you think of this wheelhouse? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Next we come to the aft flybridge area of the boat. There is lots of space out here with plenty of seating to enjoy the surrounding seascape thanks to the elevated views. Here is of course where the owner and their lucky guests get to enjoy some alfresco dining and once you've finished your meal you can sit back and relax on the L-shaped seating area. I'm sure that you already noticed the bar and grill as we walked out onto this area of the deck. I love the fact that you get 180 degree unobstructed views up here which can be enjoyed whilst you're underway as this area will be protected from the headwinds thanks to the superstructure. And remember if you're thinking of planning your own long range journey don't forget to check out Ian McNeil's book. I'll leave a link in the video description plus if you use my discount code you'll get a whopping 40% off the RRP. Before I take you down into the engine room, let me first take you to the bow lounge. Here on the bow lounge, we find a spacious sun pad and an oversized crescent shaped seating area with a settee that can be used to soak up the views whilst enjoying the sun. Can there really be a better view, especially whilst you're underway, than the views that you'll get sat up here? Let me know in the comments. Meanwhile, on the bow, we have a recessed area for the deck gear so the crew can carry on with their duties without interrupting the guests. Let's head back up onto the foredeck now so I can show you the view of the radar mast, including, of course, the must-have item for most boaters now, which of course is the Starlink antenna. As my subscribers probably already know, I'm a big fan of radar masks for some reason. I like the sleek, low profile appearance of the radar on here, of course, alongside the comms equipment. Note of course the two searchlights on the brow. In summary, I really like this area of the boat. I think it's perfect for just sitting back and relaxing with your friends as you enjoy the view whilst having a drink or two. But now it's time to head down to the engine room. Down here is also where we find the crew accommodation and mess area. As you'll see, this space is a great area for the crew to be able to come and enjoy some well-deserved downtime. As the crew are on board the boat at the moment, I will steer clear of their private cabins. The boat actually carries a crew of four in two cabins. The captain's cabin is on the bridge deck, but was occupied. So, for reasons which I'm sure you will understand, I could not show you in there. As you can see, the crew have got ready access to various displays and control systems. So should they need to, they can respond to any alarms, as well as keeping a good eye on the ship's overall systems. But now for the moment that I'm sure many of you have been waiting for, let's go into the engine room. The construction process of the Lazara UHV-87 uses e-glass and epoxy resin. This means that noise is minimized and also vibration with features like floating floors. Every component is engineered for optimal performance, functionality, and more importantly, reliability and redundancy. 
The Lazara UHV 87's engine room showcases advanced construction techniques. Utilizing e glass and epoxy resin, it achieves a significant reduction in noise and vibration as a result of its innovative floating floor design. Precision engineering is evident in every component, ensuring peak performance, reliability, redundancy, and functionality. Central to its innovative design are the two integrated sea chests for water intake, a feature that simplifies maintenance of the plumbing system while the yacht is in the water. The use of centralized discharge boxes streamlines the exterior, eliminating the need for traditional through-hole fittings. Specifications of the UHV87 include an overall length of 87 feet, a beam width of 23 feet and 7 inches and a draft of 6 feet. Powering this vessel are twin Volvo D13 engines at 1000 horsepower each. The yacht achieves a maximum speed of 16 knots and cruises comfortably at 12 knots. If you'd like to find out more about this incredible boat then I'll leave a link to Lazara's website at the bottom of the video description. big thank you to my channel members for helping to support my channel if you'd like to become a member of my youtube channel then click on the link in the video description don't forget to check out my other videos and playlists i've picked one of my favorite playlists as well as one of my favorite videos that i've put in front of you now please feel free to check it out until next time fair winds and following seas